If you want to add effects to your instruments in FL Studio, then this is the perfect video for you. But before we look up at the moon and turn into a giant ape, I've got a question for you. That question is, what are the two effects that I use on all my melodies, every single one? Leave your answer down below. If you don't know, don't worry, because I'll be revealing the answer later on in this video. Just stay tuned. Now let's get into it. There are two main ways two different ways to add effects to your instruments or sounds or audio. But before we get into that, the first thing you need to do is make sure that your instruments, your audio, your sounds are linked to your mixer. I do have a video that walks you through that process, but just quickly, let's say this is what we want to link to our mixer. This piano over here, in order to link this to our mixer, we just look over here and pick where we want it to be. This is now gonna go into the first mixer channel over here. This is the first mixer channel. If we go to two, that's gonna be in the second mixer channel. That is how that works. Very, very straightforward, very, very easy. Now let's go on to how to actually add effects to these mixer channels. Two different ways. Let's get into the first way. First way is to add the effect directly to your mixer channel. For example, let's start on our main chorus melody and let's use this as an example. This is our main mixer channel. Right now, these are the effects that we currently have on it, but they're not active because this is grayed out. Now let's turn these off and turn this on. This means our effects are active. And in order to add something, all we need to do is click on one of these slots and find what we want to add. Let's say we was going to add this distortion plugin for some reason. And then you need to make sure that it's also green on the right hand side, meaning that this effect is active. So if you play back. This is actually being distorted. So let's actually find something that's a bit more prevalent so you can hear what's going on. But there's also another way to add effects because this may not be the best way to add an effect to your sound. The type of effects you want to add directly to your sound would be EQ, compression, and any effects you want to change your original sound. But before we get to the next way that you can add effects to your sounds without actually changing that original sound or for other effects like reverb, delay, and other effects that you may wanna add, you don't wanna use this way, you wanna use the second way. Before we get into that, if you want your beats half mixed before you even get to the mixing stage, grab my beat mixing templates. This is my pop trap loop beat mixing template and it's amazing. I use this for every beat that I'm making and I love it. It saves me a bunch of time, makes my beats sound more professional, makes them sound better, makes me understand what my beats are gonna sound like before I even start mixing, which saves me a lot of time and saves me a lot of headache of going back and changing things and all that sort of stuff. If you wanna grab it, link down below, go to jcarterray.com forward slash FL templates, grab it now. You're going to thank yourself later. Now, the second method is to use a send channel. What this does, is it sends a copy of your original sound to a different channel, the send channel. For example, this is our reverb channel that I've named pad reverb, but I basically use it for all my melody reverbs. And if we just play this, you won't hear anything. But if we play this and the main chorus melody, you can hear the reverb that's actually occurring over here. And you want to use this method for reverbs, delays, and any effects that you want to add, but you don't want to affect your original sound. You can use this for compression as well if you want to do some parallel compression, but you want to keep the dynamics of your main sound, but also add that beefiness of compression. That's a great way to do it. And it also allows you to mix your original sound and the affected sound together to have more control over what that sound turns into so on your send channel you'll make sure that whatever effect you're using is all the way wet so this reverb is sending out a hundred percent of the wet signal and then if we was to actually well we're not sending it through here we're sending it through our melody bus but we can actually 
make this louder or quieter, we can send more of the signal or less of the signal by doing this. So this is what it sounds like with more. And then we can have those actually together. So because this is going out to the melody bus, we need to turn this on to hear the melody through there. And then we can turn on our pad reverb. And then both the reverb and our original single is coming through at the same time. So we can... So we can control exactly how much reverb is applied to that original signal to get our overall signal, our overall sound. This is very important. Don't apply reverb to your main signal, your original signal. Don't just slap it on to your track. Make sure you're using Ascend. Make sure you're using Ascend for delay. And pretty much most effects that you don't want to use to craft your sound effects that you want to use to kind of add some source to your sound use a send track for that however if you want to change your sound and mold it like with eq or compression or whatever other plugin you want to use maybe some distortion you can fling that on the original sound but even distortion you could use a send for that try both of them see what effect you'd like better and then you can use whichever one you want. But now you know how. And earlier on, I asked you a question and I'm a man of my word. So let me answer that question for you right now. That question was, what are the two effects that I use on all my melodies? Every single one. That answer is EQ, 100%, always use EQ on everything. And RC20, RC20 adds a nice analog rustic feel to your melodies it adds a little bit of wobble a little bit of noise to make it sound analog and real which is very very important especially when you're making your beats and your songs using digital software and i'm sure you're using a bunch of if you're watching this you're using digital software to make your your sounds and whatnot you're probably using vsts which are digital as well you want to make them sound as real as possible just so as humans we hear it and it sounds like it adds warmth and just makes it sound better to the human ear so when you hear it it doesn't sound weird and cold and super digital it sounds like it's supposed to exist if you get what i'm saying so rc20 love it i'll leave a link down below if you want to grab it i highly suggest it and eq every daw comes with eq it's very very important to use eq even for the basics of just getting rid of some of the high end getting rid of some of the low end and then to basically shape the sound to sound better for example sometimes sounds will have too much of certain frequencies in there that will really just hurt your ears or it just won't sound the way you want it to you can always use eq to shape that sound to sound exactly like what you want it to sound like so eq rc20 very very great stuff if you want a free gift before you go you can use my easy nine step trap beat making formula in my free course which is linked down below or go to jcartarray.com forward slash free trap course that course will take you from making your melody all the way to mastering your beat and it's absolutely free so you got nothing to lose except for the opportunity to join this free course right now link down below or if this is on the end screen over there if you got any questions or any other tutorials you want me to make next let me know in the comment section down below check out that video next and i'll see you in the next one peace out